What's up? Today, I'm going to show you guys my master chain. I just want to preface this video by saying that I am not a mastering engineer. I've just seen a lot of videos over the years and I've learned just different things through those videos. So very like DIY in a sense. And from own like trial and error, this is what I've found that usually is a good starting point and what works best for me when I'm in the mastering process. So this is it. So starting off here, we have Neutron 3 on this master chain. And this is a third party plugin that I use from Isotope a lot. And I usually use track assist just to get started with some like reactive, like dynamic EQing. And then they also have like a sculptor in here that I use a lot. If you guys know what Gullfoss is, it's very similar to that. And these are the two that I usually get out of it. And then I just use the equalizer in here just to roll off the low end around like 20 hertz. And then I'll do, like I said, it has some like dynamic EQing that I adjust. Sometimes the one of my things that's like a gripe with this is that it over compresses it. So I take the compressors out. You don't need them. And then I'll usually reduce this. If it's like negative four, it's probably better around like a negative two, negative three range. Um, sometimes it could be a little harsh with the EQing. So just look out for that if you ever use this in any sort of like mixing or mastering situation. Neutron 3 is usually used for mixing, but I do think it has some benefits in the early mastering stages. Then moving on, I have Isotope Ozone here. I have Ozone 6 actually. I use this to just enhance the stereo image um, in certain instances and then just to make sure that everything that's 100 hertz or lower is in mono. So you can see here I have band one at negative 100 just so that's in mono, just reinforcing that. And then I'll usually not do too much with the second band and then the third and the fourth band. I might boost the width just a little bit, not too much. I don't want it to sound super crazy too far off to the sides, but I do do a little bit just to increase the stereo effect. Next up, I use a glue compressor here. This one, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Uh, I'll play with the attack and the release a little bit. And this is what I have as like the default typically. Um, it's not a lot of compression. Usually when this meter is moving, it's moving bare, like a dB maybe um, on the glue compressor. So not too much. And then what I'm doing here is I have a utility grouped in there as well. Just so when I boost the makeup, I'm actually dropping the gain at the same time uh, so that it's not doing too much boosting of the volume because that's what I'm going to be using the limiters for next is boosting that volume. So I just want to apply a little bit of compression here just to kind of bring things together just a little bit, not too much. So I have two FabFilter Pro L2s. You could use a basic limiter as well if you're just making a remix. Those work as well, but I personally prefer the Pro L2. So here I have the out set to negative three. So that's like my ceiling. And then I have a preset here, general purpose limiting. You don't have to use that. I just have it on here is where I start. I usually change the attack and release knobs, to be honest. And then I'll just bring the gain up until I'm getting about one dB of gain reduction. And then I'll stop it around there. And then I have my second limiter here, which I then use to bring it up to zero dB. And the main takeaway from the master chain here, this is, like I said, this is not a silver bullet approach. Like this isn't gonna make any track sound like fantastic and amazing and beautiful, like a freaking Picasso painting. Like it's not, it, it's not how this works. Um, you'll see it in every other video. People say it all the time. It should start in the mixing phase. So when you're working with your mixes and you're getting your mix down the way you want it, that's when you're gonna see really great results on the master itself. These are just little changes that I'm doing. Like these, this Neutron 3, like the EQ, the reactive EQ, really tiny changes. The isotope ozone, tiny changes. The glue compressor is barely doing anything. And then I'm just turning up the volume at the end of the day. So it's not too, too much, but those little changes do add up when you're talking about like those broad stroke effects. So that's my master chain. All righty, ladies and gents, that wraps it up for today's video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I'll be back next week more on the edit side of the spectrum here. I'm going to be going back. I'll be showing you guys how I make my party break edits because I have a party break edit pack coming out very, very soon. Very excited about that. So next week, party break edits. Till then, take it easy. Tell someone you love them, all of that good stuff. And I'll be back soon.